Y'all know what the first topic is. For the first topic for you guys, we got Larry Bird and we got Kevin Durant. Who is the better small forward out of these two? Um, Casual got Kevin Durant. Elder Rufus got Larry Bird. We cool with this? Y'all ready to rock and roll? Let's get yes, it. Sir. All right, cool. Um, as I was saying, um, oh, and by the way, everybody watching, this isn't just for shits and giggles. This isn't just for bragging rights. There is a thousand dollars on the line right now for this whole thing, and it starts right now. All right, I would say Larry Bird is a better small forward than Kevin Durant. Um because Larry Bird played in one of the hardest eras of all time, one of the most scoring eras of all time, um, really where the super teams kind of really started. Um, the era he played in, I mean, the Lakers had a super team. Philly had a super team. They had one. The Pistons ended up having one. And him and Magic went back and forth. But when you compare the stats between Larry Bird and Kevin Durant, really the only area that Kevin Durant – has a little bit of an edge over him is longevity and he has it in a little bit in scoring. But as you've seen with Larry having super teams, uh, he had to split all that up. But Larry was a much, he was, I would say they, they are probably even in shooting. In my personal opinion, I actually like Bird more, but I'll call it even. But Bird is a much better passer and a much better rebounder than him. He was a much better defender. He got accolades in all those areas. Um, Kevin Durant has none in that. Pretty much Kevin Durant has just been a score, and at the end of the day, Bird has been a much better leader. He came in right out of college and the second year in the league, led that team with all those superstars to the championship, and he's always was, always was and always will be the best player on those teams in the 80s with Robert Parrish, uh, Kevin McHale, Dennis Johnson, Danny Ainge, all those guys. He was the number one guy, and again, he led his teams. He didn't have to go hook up with anybody else. He led those teams to three championships during those years. So that's why he's the best. All right, Casual, your rebuttal is now. Round one starts right now for you. Well, I didn't know it was possible for him to lose me in the first 10 seconds. He said Larry Bird played in a harder era. I was like, okay. Um, I don't know how hard the 80s were. I don't think the 80s were that hard. I think when you look at Larry Bird's peak, now if you were to do the totality – of Larry Bird's career, then you start throwing in like guys like Dr. J, Moses Malone. Okay. But when you look at his apex, when he was winning those three championships, when he was piling up those three MVPs specifically, it was really just Magic Johnson and the Lakers. Isaiah Thomas wasn't an MVP candidate like a Larry Bird to steal those awards from Larry Bird. The Pistons started to really get good towards the tail end of the Celtics' time. They started winning as soon as Larry Bird's back started to go out. Other than Magic Johnson, who was really competing for those chips with Larry Bird? I mean, Larry, Philly was a tough team, but that was early on in Larry Bird's career before Larry Bird was a for real MVP candidate. And you said Larry Bird led those teams to three championships, and you're saying Kevin Durant wasn't leading teams? Well, last time I checked, Kevin Durant had never had a finals MVP go to one of his teammates. Kevin Durant won every single finals MVP he was on. Larry Bird's first championship, Larry, it was Cedric Maxwell, I believe, um, in 1981, not Larry Bird. Kevin Durant was also the leading scorer on his team in every single one of his NBA finals. So if you want to talk about him leading teams to championships, I see a leader when he is leading his team in scoring. In every single finals he's been in, won or lost, the ones he was healthy, not including the Toronto Raptors one where he played 11 minutes. All right. We off to a hot start. Y'all heard round one from both of these individuals. Now we're going to get into round two. Elder Rufus, it is on you, and your time starts. Hold on, I thought I, I thought we swapped. We don't mm -hmm. go back and forth. Hold, hold up, stop, stop the time. No, I, you, I, you, I it's, start it's the last one. It's okay. three rounds per topic. No problem. So no now, problem. So now, now, now you get to rebuttal him now. Oh, three. Hold on, three rounds per topic. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. My bad, my bad, my bad. All right, let's go. All right, here we go. Back on you. Mm -hmm. All right. I wouldn't call Kevin Durant leading anything just because he led the team in scoring. That team was already a ready-made championship level team. When Larry Bird got to the Celtics, they were not even close to being a championship team. I think they hadn't won a championship since 76, if I'm not mistaken. And then he got there in what, 80? That's when him and Magic got there to the league. So they were not even close to being a championship level team when Larry Bird got there. Um, 
I wouldn't call what Kevin Durant do is leading. I mean, it's easy to jump on a bus that's already rolling and already knows how to win chips and things of that magnitude. And that team was clearly Steph Curry's team. Him and um, 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 Clay Thompson gave that to old boy. They allowed him to come in and do that. And again, what he does is score. So no one's surprised that he led that team in scoring because Steph and them just allowed him to come in and fit in with the team. Um, Larry Bird, even in his heyday, though, there were still great teams in the East. You still had teams like the Pistons that were still very good. Cleveland that was very good. Philly that was very good. There was a lot of very good teams in the East still back then. And in the West, these teams just were dominant. Again, you had super teams. That's why I said it was multiple teams that became super teams. So the Lakers and the Celtics did dominate that. But Larry Bird was the leader of his team through the whole entire thing. And again, you talk about three MVPs in a row. You talking about uh, um, being the um, MVP of the uh, championship those two years. I mean, Bird, Bird to me, it's just gutty, gritty. And in every other aspect of the game, he was just better than Kevin Durant. There's, to me, there's no other aspect he's not. All right, Elder, that concludes your time. Casual is on you. Round two for you starts right now. I think you're really trying to make the gap between him as a scorer and shooter with Bird and Kevin Durant closer than it actually is. I think you said slightly better, which just isn't true. I mean, Larry Bird first time was a good shooter, but then when you put Larry Bird against the other shooters, especially Kevin Durant era shooters, he doesn't come close as far as the percentages. Kevin Durant was in the playoffs in the regular season, in the NBA Finals, 50, 40, 90, a whole bunch of times. I think that's what he averages in the NBA Finals, 50, 40, 90. That's not what Larry Bird does. How many seasons is Larry Bird shooting 38, 40% from three? How many seasons is he doing that? Not that many. Albeit the volume isn't as crazy, but Kevin Durant's just a more volume shooter as well. They're not the same level of score. The score Kevin Durant has an average less than 25 points per game since his rookie season. And you still try to say the 80s were tough. I don't think the 80s were tougher than Kevin Durant's era. I think Kevin Durant faced tougher competition. Now, again, it's all down to Larry Bird's peak. At Larry Bird's peak, what his apex when he was winning those trophies, when he was winning those three straight MVPs, other than Magic and the Lakers, who was really taking it from him? Philly wasn't there. And then the Pistons came along right at the tail end. Who was taking those away from him? Because MJ wasn't on a good team yet to really win those MVPs. So who was taking it away from Larry Bird other than Magic? All right, elders, back on you. We got round right. three. This is the conclusion of this topic. You guys in with some haymakers. Elders, back on you. Your time starts right now. Okay. Um, the, the era that he was in, again, they were allowed to play actual defense. The defensive guys actually could be physical and aggressive. Again, there was two different styles with Magic and with what's the name them. But, again, you saying who, who overtook him, nobody could overtake him because he was that good in the East. Magic just happened to be that good in the West. There's always going to be a team in the other conference that you go against. So it's only going to be a Western conference if you East or West or East if you West. So your, your argument there makes no sense that these teams weren't good because Magic was the only one that beat them. Those other teams weren't good enough, even though they were good. Those were good teams. He took out Isaiah Thomas and he took out Michael Jordan and he took out Larry Nance and all these dudes. He took these dudes out. And those teams were good. The Knicks teams were tough. But, they, they, again, none of those teams could match Larry Bird. None of those teams could match Larry Bird. None of them could. And then when you talk about 50, 40, 90, do you understand who created 50, 40, 90? You may want to go back and research that. You keep talking about his peak. He did that three straight years. That's why he won MVP. Larry Bird and them didn't shoot threes like that. It wasn't really a part of the game. But Larry Bird, when they started shooting more threes, go look at what his percentages was. Larry Bird was right there at 40% every time, bro. And again, he had to split it up with other players. So you you eliminating this part. What about the rebounding? The man averaged 10 rebounds. What about the assists? Kevin Durant don't hold a candle to him in neither one of those other categories. Or defense. Bird, three-time defensive player. All right, Elder, I had, to, I had to mute you. Your time is up. Casual, it is back on you for the last round of this topic. Talk to me. Well, you brought up a couple teams for Larry Bird's competition. One of them was the New York Knicks. I don't know who was on the New York Knicks in the 1980s, but they weren't even close to being a competitive team next to the Celtics with Larry Bird. And then you also brought up the Cavs. The Cavs? Larry Nance? 
Larry Nance is contending for finals and MVPs. Okay. I will give you that. Larry Bird's a better playmaker. He is. He has better defensive IQ. I won't say he's much of a better defender because I think Kevin Durant's more athletic. He's longer length as far as he averages more block shots. And he's more athletic. Kevin Larry Bird does have, you know, he does have the defensive IQ, although it's different errors, though, because Kevin Durant has to play defense in a wider space early. Because you did say the defense was better in the 80s. I'm not glorifying bad boy Pistons documentaries. I actually went back and watched some of those games. A lot of those guys were slow footed. The spacing wasn't all that great. Yeah, the defense might look better. Well, that's because maybe they might hard foul once or twice a game in the paint and that lets get slide. Other than that, you know, you can hand check a little bit. It wasn't that crazy. These guys weren't crazy. They're more better athletes today. It's just the spacing was all that cooked. But, yeah, I will give you the better leader. It is a hard battle because most people would agree that Larry Bird is better than Kevin Durant. But when I think about Kevin Durant, I think about one of the greatest scorers to ever play this game. I think about the probably the biggest plug-and-play guy in NBA history. You put him on any team, they're going to go to the playoffs. You put him on any team, you have no chemistry problems, you're fine. He's going to get his 30, and you're going to win a lot of games. That's who Kevin Durant is. He's an MVP. He's a champion. And in the finals, he's one of the greatest final before. Casual, I, I muted him, so I had to mute too. I got I got I, I to gotta, I gotta be consistent. All right. Y'all just seen it. Um, that was the conclusion of round one or topic one. Um, that was a good topic. We had the good old Larry Bird, 1980s, versus Kevin Durant, the current era right now, of who is the better small forward. We're going to put up a poll right now. We're going to allow you guys to vote and let us know who do you think won. Keep in mind, chat, I need you guys to do me a favor. Before this poll goes up, I need you guys to do me a favor. We're not being biased. Okay, we not do it. We starting this off right now. The first battle in the PCL. We are not being biased. If you like Casual more, don't vote on him because you like him more. If you like Elder Rufus more, don't vote on him because you like his personality more. If you like KD more than Larry Bird, don't vote on Larry Bird or KD just because you like him more. What we're voting on is who had the better take? Who made the more compelling argument? Who was more convincing? Who brought stats? Who brought facts? Who had aura? <laughs> you know, like who, who was entertaining? All of, all of this goes into the whole thing. It's hey, it's it's a it's a whole pizza. It's not just one slice. All right, man, y'all go ahead, get over there and vote, and let's figure out who won this round. Keep in mind too, while you guys are voting, this isn't just the live chat that votes on this, guys. This vote will run consistently through and through. So un until the end of the regular season, these votes are live on YouTube, and people can come and vote for you. So if somebody comes in and says Elder Roof is one two one, that's a vote that we will tally to you. If somebody comes in and says, "Yo, Casual will smoke them. He swept them." They'll get that vote. These votes will not only be today; it won't even only be the live vote. It will be a vote that consistently goes through and through. So y'all be sure if you're watching right now, comment on the video and let us know who won this round. The vote only counts if you comment. Our second topic of the day for Elder Rufus versus Casual is 1995 Houston Rockets versus the 2016 Golden State Warriors. Which one of these teams would win in a seven-game series? This is a good one, y'all. <laughs> hey, I've been waiting for this one. This is a good one. Uh, casual, it is on you to go first. and You have the 2016 Golden State Warriors. You ready yes. to rock and roll? Okay, okay. So the question that you said in the chat, not ready, but the question you said in the chat said who was better, the 2010 Warriors or the 90s Rockets? So is it just the 2016 Warriors? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna I, go to that's what I saw, Ron. The 2016 said, Warriors and the 1995 Rockets. I saw that. I didn't see what you just yeah, said. Yeah, it's it, it's 2016. We can't uh, we can't really add KD into this. I think oh, that, no, it's cool. You I got you. You good with that? Yes, sir. All right, cool, cool. Let's make it happen. Uh 2016 Warriors. 1995 Rockets. It's on you, Casual. I know what he's going to do, and I know that he's instantly going to point out that this team in 2016, you see the poster over my right shoulder. It's the Cleveland Cavaliers won that championship. I know, I know. This team blew a 3-1 lead. I'm not going to ignore that. But what I am going to do is talk about the collection of talent because you know who they blew the 3-1 lead to. Probably the only man in history that could ever come back from that 3-1 lead. And that's LeBron Ramon James. Let's focus on the team itself and what it did throughout the totality of the year. This team won 73 games. Elder, before when you go to your talking point, 
Tell me how many teams have won 73 games in NBA history. Actually, you don't have to answer that. It's been none. More than MJ's Bulls, that 96 Bulls team with who some people say is the greatest team of all time, with the greatest player, with an all with all NBA guys, with Hall of Famers everywhere. That Warriors team won more games. That Warriors team is also extremely resilient. They also came back down 3-1 against a really good Thunder team with two All-NBA, two MVP candidates in Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. But this is a team that has all-time collection of talent, more than the Houston Rockets, which I'll get to in my next point. But you're talking about a team with three All-NBA guys. Not one, not two, not three. An MVP, this is pretty much a super team. An MVP in his prime in Stephen Curry, one of the 10 greatest players to ever play the game, one of the greatest shooters ever in Klay Thompson, who was All-NBA and a Defensive Player of the Year All-NBA guy in Draymond Green. It's one of the greatest collections of talent we've ever seen. Elder, it's on you. Round one for you. You got the 1995 Rockets. Talk to us. All right. I'm going to just uh, stick with facts. The facts is the team did win 73 games, and it didn't mean nothing because we played – to win. The goal of playing is to win the championship. So winning 73 games in the regular season means absolutely nothing if you can't close the deal. Now we're dealing with facts. The um, Thunder had their number. If they didn't have to deal with a selfish point guard in Russell Westbrook, who literally shot his own team out of going to the finals, they would have been nothing to talk about because they wouldn't have even made it to the finals. That team that Kevin Durant was on should have made it to the finals, but Russell Westbrook blew that. These are just facts. Now, when it comes to this Rockets team, what I'll say about this team is this. With Elijah Wan and Drexel, when they finally got him, you got two guys here in the playoffs putting up 55 points a game pretty much, bro. And they were so impossible just to beat because the, the way the teams were built back in the 90s, you had to have a team solid enough to beat Jordan. Remember, Jordan was running the 90s. So teams were building their teams to stop Jordan and Pippen, to stop these wings. And, and Houston had done a really good job of putting together a good, solid team with young and old guys. If you look at their roster, they had a good mix. And these guys were all specialists. They had their scorers and those two dudes. They had their big-time shot makers from the outside. But the rest of that team was designed to do something specifically defensively to shut down teams like the Bulls. They would have shut uh, Golden State down with a heartbeat. All right, we off to a hot start. Hey, we smoking round one. We smoking. All right, casual, the time's back on you. You got a minute and 30 seconds to rebuttal Elder Rufus. Your time starts now. You can't say this team was built to shut down the, the, the Chicago Bulls when they didn't even face the Chicago Bulls in both the playoffs and they won the two championships. MJ wasn't really in the league, so I don't know if they were built to beat them. But, you know, you can say this team would have shut down the Warriors. You have no chance in hell of knowing that because no team – prior to 2016, ever saw a team constructed like the Golden State Warriors with all their off-ball movement, with the way Clay and Steph, the Splash Bros. Was there a Splash Bros in 1994 who can shoot from the logo? I don't think so. I don't think you were picking up these guys off screens at half court. That didn't happen back in the 90s. I'm not saying the – now, listen, the 95 Rockets are a damn good team. They are a really good team. Good defense. They have Clyde, who was also, I believe, all NBA third team that year. That is a really good team. But it's just an unfair matchup because if they go on the same court, if this is a head-to-head -head series, give it like five games. They just now they had good shooters, but they just weren't built to see the Warriors because no one at the time sees the Warriors. Those athletes would have a field day. I mean, not a field. They would not even know how to guard Stephen Curry, how to get these screens with Clay Thompson. They would have no idea. They would have no idea seeing a defensive player like Draymond at his size and his strength and what he can do versatile. They have a Finals MVP off the bench three all nba guys mvp shooters and a finals mvp on the bench and the proven champions all right casual looks sound like he's cooking up he's starting to warm up elder uh oh he's starting to warm up elder round two that's on you a minute and 30 your time starts when you do the only problem with casuals takes is that they that the casual and they're just opinions they're not really basing them on facts at the end of the day this team was built to beat the Bulls because the Bulls dominated the first part of the 90s. Nobody knew Jordan was going to retire the way he did or get put out the league. We'll talk about that later. They didn't know that was going to happen. 
So teams had to gear up to deal with their wings. This team was good at that. And they had to gear up to have guards that can handle their shooters like Craig Hodges, like uh, uh, what's his name? Steve Kerr. These kind of guys, this team always had these type of dudes around. So teams start building their teams to stop this type of stuff. Golden State would have got eaten for lunch. When you got guys like Sam Gasell and Kenny Smith hawking uh, 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 Curry all the way up and down the court, when you got, uh, uh, they called him Glide for a reason. Clyde the Glide, he would have been all over Clay. And these guys were all defensive-minded guys. They would have made it very, very hard for them. And here's the biggest thing. What would the Warriors done defensively? Nobody there would have been able to even come close to stopping Clyde. And Elijah Wan, the, the, the league MVP, we ain't talking about finals. He was that too. But we're talking about the league MVP. Putting up 33 and 11 on people's head, dominating guys like Shaq in the finals. Are you serious? Now, he was young, but Shaq was still considered a dominant defensive force. And he made that man, young man look like a fool. Literally, it was embarrassing watching it. They wouldn't have had anyone to even come close to Garden for key. They would have destroyed their team. All right, here we go. We're getting into the last round. It is round three of topic two. 2016 Warriors versus the 95 Rockets is back on you, casual. Do your thing. <laughs> well, I thought this was player choice debate, not player's choice comedy night. He said Kenny Smith is going to step to Steph Curry. I've seen all defensive guys struggle with Steph Curry. All defensive wings, guards, not even knowing to get over a screen against Steph Curry. And Kenny the Jet Smith is going to get in Curry's face when Curry's all the way at the logo. They've never, again, you said they were built to beat the 90s. You said, I don't say facts. And you say the Rockets were built to beat MJ. Well, I think that's just your opinion because how can you know a team was built to beat a team when they didn't even play the damn team in the playoffs when it mattered the most? And there's, again, there's no way that this team could dog walk a team that they've never seen play like that before. It would catch them by surprise. Now, Akeem's going to get his. Akeem Olajuwon is one of the greatest players to ever play the game. He's going to get his. But I saw this Warriors team win the NBA Finals and LeBron's averaging like 40 a game. Just because one guy is going for 30 points, what about the others? You keep bringing up Clyde. You're saying they can't guard Clyde. You're acting like Clyde is like 92 MJ. This is 1995 Clyde when he's barely on. He's 20 points per game in the playoffs. I think Clay Thompson, who was all defense that year and all defense during that dynasty, can do a pretty good job checking Clyde Drexler. No one's scared of a 20-point-per-game score. How about can Clyde, check, can Clyde check Clay Thompson when Clay Thompson's coming off a pin down and shooting in his face, something that they never see? Something that they never see. Again, I just think it's an unfair matchup where it's a team in the Golden State Warriors that even caught modern-day teams off surprise. Teams today still can't figure out the Warriors. All right, y'all. That was heat. That was heat. Uh, chat, talk to me. Let me know how you're feeling. We're going to go ahead and run this poll right now. Uh, go ahead and throw the timer on the screen. Throw the poll up. And I want to see how oh. you guys. He's I don't get go the again. rebuttal. He's got to go again. Yeah, I got to go again. Oh, because I went host. first. I went first. He went first. Oh, yeah, Elder's yeah, got to yeah. go again. Yeah, I got to go again. All right, Elder, it's mm -hmm. back on you. Round three, you get your final rebuttal. Let's go ahead and get into it. Um, it's your last rebuttal. Let's, Let's do get it. To it. Man, saying that they ain't never seen a pin down, that's just, that's, that's, that's not, I don't even know how to respond to something like that, man. The pin down's been in basketball for 60 years, so stop it. I'm telling you right now, teams now are doing what? They're getting bigger. Why? Because Jokic came in and started dominating everybody in the inside. So teams are wanting centers again. They got away from them before Jokic started dominating. They're getting them back now. A lot of teams ain't never played Jokic, but they're still getting their team ready. So if they do face him and he makes it to the finals, they'll be prepared. So to sit here and say just because they didn't play him, they weren't preparing, yeah, they were. The Bulls dominated the early part of the 90s, the first three years of it. So those teams, a lot of the teams in the league were already gearing it up. At the end of the day, it would depend on what style of basketball we had to play. Because I can tell you're coming from the new age style of basketball where you don't have to play defense. Let's so just keep it above. This 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 new uh, what guy that runs the NBA, you don't, you don't get to touch guys defensively. You can't be aggressive defensively. You can't hand check defensively. And then guys are allowed to carry and palm the ball. See, when we played, you had to have a, your hand over the ball. You couldn't go on the side underneath all that. You couldn't do that. And you couldn't take 27 steps this way and that way to take shots. All that stuff was not part of our game. So I guess it would depend on which game we playing. 
Now, we playing this new age game, those guys in, in 95 will need time to adjust. But if they playing old school, real true basketball where both sides can be aggressive, that team would destroy them because they're stronger, bigger, faster, and they have nobody that can guard them. And don't forget, 20 points back then, that was a lot because you only scored 100 a game. All right. Y'all heard it here first. That was topic two, and that was he. Third topic. Who had the bigger impact on the game? The game meaning the NBA. The game meaning the culture. The game meaning the, the, the way that the game was played, the style of play, all of that stuff. Who had their thumbprint on the NBA more? Allen Iverson or Stephen Curry? Y'all ready to get into this, fellas? All right. Elder, it's back on you. Let's get it. You have, you have Allen Iverson. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. All right. Um, Allen Iverson would probably be the number one player in this culture, in this, I mean, not this, in this uh, generation. I mean, the things that he's doing and what he did back then, I mean, like he was the main one coming with all the tax. He was the main one came with the cornrows. He was the main one um, that had to kind of do what you want to do attitude, even though like off the court, he really wasn't causing no issues and problems. Like he wasn't staying in court and jail and all this kind of crazy stuff, but he was just free. And then he was such a dog. You know what I mean? He was just a dog out there. He was the one that brought out people appreciating high volume scores that didn't automatically be very efficient. You see what I'm saying? Because the games before him, guys cared about their efficiency. Guys, if you're a guard, you should be able to shoot 45 to 48, 49 percent. Iverson blew that all out the water with his heart. And Iverson just was a dog and he really didn't care what other people said. Now, he wasn't a very dishonorable, disrespectful dude, but I'm talking about his dress changed the culture. His style with the cornrows, the tats, all that stuff. Uh, his shoes were revolutionary. I had all of his shoes. I still got some of his shoes. The Reebok answer, I mean, the, with the honeycombs. I mean, the brother just changed everything about the way you look at the NBA players. But at the same time, he get, let guys be free. Because, you know, back then, they would put you in this corporate mantra and, hey, come in with a certain tie. About, even though I'm playing basketball. I was like, no, nah, bump that. This is who I am. This I'm coming to the gym. I'm coming with big baggy sweatpants. I'm doing this. And 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 I just think he had more impact culturally. All right. Elder just put y'all on notice with Allen Iverson. Casual, you have Steph Curry next. Your time starts when you do. I want to start by saying this. Mr. Elder made some really good points. Allen Iverson is very influential. But Ron asked the question, who was more influential for the game? The game we play is basketball. I do agree that Allen Iverson is influential. That he influenced many players. He influenced the culture. But Steph influenced the game itself. Basketball. He influenced how we play from when we start in elementary school to the days our knees blow out at 50 years old at LA Fitness. Steph changed how we played the entire game. And this is coming from a guy who grew up playing basketball, started going, started playing basketball right when Steph Curry blew up. I saw the game flash in front of my very eyes. One day, everyone's in the gym shooting layups, post-ups, elbow jumpers. The next day, I'm at basketball camp. I walk in. Instead of doing the normal layup lines, it's everyone shooting 35-footers. That was Steph Curry. The reason why Steph Curry has more impact on the game itself, because he strategically changed the game, how we play basketball, how we match up against teams, how people play. Allen Iverson influenced how some players play. He influenced culture, and you see the culture angle. But when we talk about basketball, from the day you first play at elementary school, all around the globe in Japan, in Europe, in the United States, how we strategically play basketball changed more with Stephen Curry. Mm, hey, I ain't gonna lie. Best back and forth yet. We'll see if y'all can top it. We got round two of topic three. Elder Rufus, it is on you. All right. We would say we're talking about NBA basketball, right? I will ask this simple question. Is it a game first or is it a business first? And I'll pause for a few seconds to let y'all all think. The game becomes irrelevant if you don't manage the business. If it's a business first, which it is, 
money matters. If money matters, culture matters. Allen Iverson affected everybody around the world with what he's doing. People are still dressing and tatting up and corn rolling. I mean, I looked at the all the people in the draft this year. Look how many guys got corn rolls in their head, braids in their head. Now, back in those days, nobody did. Iverson started all that. So he's had a major impact on the game, even playing on court. Like I said, he was the first guy that we accepted being inefficient, but an incredible score. Why? Because he led the league in scoring, what, four times, something like that? Led the league in steals three times. I mean, Allen Iverson was just a flat-out dog who would go get it and wasn't afraid of nothing, being 5'11 and going in dunking on seven-footers. I mean, this dude changed the mindset of players, letting them know when he took teams that you probably can't remember one or two guys even played on that team that he led to the championship, but he led them to the championship. He lost to the mighty Lakers and Kobe and, 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 and Shaq, but that team, nobody should have led that team, but he let everybody believe you can you can. This is how he changed the mindset of people when it comes to basketball and how people perceive you in business and in pleasure. All right. There you have it. Elder Rufus, round two just concluded. Casual is back on you for round two. The time starts when you do. We're talking about who was more impactful in changing the game, not who was more impactful in driving people to the barbershop or a tattoo parlor. The game itself Basketball is a global sport where basketball is played everywhere. The reason why I do I don't want to downplay Allen Iverson's impact, but Allen I, but the reason why Allen Iverson is not more impactful than Stephen Curry is because not everyone can be Allen Iverson. Not everyone can subscribe to Allen Iverson's Allen Iverson's culture. Not everyone is a six foot guard who has the who could, equipped and was allowed to dribble like Allen Iverson. Because you haven't even brought up Allen Iverson's handle and his dribbling. Not everyone is allowed to do that at their size because they're not a six foot small guard but everyone can shoot in 2024 actually if you can't shoot in 2024 you're unemployed you're unplayable in many spots big spots that wins games if you can't dribble i've never heard someone who if you can't do an Allen iverson size up or if you don't have tattoos you're unplayable you can't shoot you're unplayable and that's because steph curry changed how we valued the three-point shot. Steph Curry changed the game. And you're talking about Allen Iverson's his game went to an NBA Finals. Yes, he did that. Steph Curry's game won the NBA Finals. Not once, not twice, not three times, not four times. And in 2022, he showed you that even today, if you go under a screen, you cannot do that in 2022, or he's going to shoot over the top of you. All right. Here we go, fellas. Here we go. We got one more round. Elder Rufus, it is round three. Take it away whenever you're ready. All right. I don't want to bash Steph Curry because I do believe he had an incredible thing, and that's actually why I gave it to you because I believe that you could easily defend him in this. But I could also make a case of how Steph Curry play has actually hurt the NBA because we're looking at things going in a entertainment fashion more than anything, which, again, now we're back to – the game of basketball being a business first. You cannot have the game without the business first. And Steph Curry has been good for business because guys want to see the flashy handles and the layup packages, and they want to – because Steph Curry got all that. They want to see the long bomb threes and all that. But most guys don't work on the real skills of the game. They don't work on their basketball IQ. They don't even work on a basic – like most guards today don't even know how to throw the ball into the post to a guy. They forget about the basics of the basket of the game that make you a really good player. So that looks really, really good for Steph Curry. But how many other guys is going to be able to get away with that and actually win championships? He's an anomaly. And I'm, I'm agreeing that he has changed the game. But I look at a lot of stuff going on in the game today and Steph Curry's style, what people are trying to mimic, which not many can, not many can at all, is hurting them. Look at it. I'll give you a good example. Look at a guy like Trey Young. Is he not a Steph Curry type style player? Same type of stuff going on, right? Why do they not respect him? Why is this man averaging 28 points, 11 assists a year, and they don't even want to put him in an all-star game? They won't even think about him for the Olympic games because he doesn't win. And I wish I had more time. <laughs> I have more, but it's good. We can go round four. Y'all want to go round four? I mean, it's up to him, but. Nah, I have nah, we, 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 we got to <laughs> conclude it. All right, so we're about to put the poll up. Oh. It was a good bet. No, no, he got one more. I started this. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad. He got one more. I'm, 
I'm I'm tripping today. It's been a it's been a long day, y'all. We had the panel earlier good. today. Well, I don't got time to get into all of that. Casual <laughs> is on you, round three. I, I won't take that much Topic time. Topic three. But... Do you do your thing. Your time starts when you do. I understand where you're getting at about like the Steph model, like that Trey Young, like Steph model. Steph is an anomaly. I do agree to an extent. I don't think there will never be a one for one copycat of Steph to do what he did, win those championships, someone who can shoot at the exact same level. I don't think someone will ever be able to replicate Steph. What I meant by shooting is like, I'm not saying everyone's going to play like Steph, but what Steph did, now you can make an argument that maybe the NBA was already track like it's already it was already gearing towards the movement but Steph was at the forefront of the three-point movement the threes are better than twos movement I'm not exactly arguing that Steph was more influential now everyone wants to play like Steph which is kind of true but shooting got valued way more not just in the NBA because your influence on Allen Iverson is more on the NBA I'm talking globally around the world no matter who you are no matter who your culture is shooting is valued more today because of Steph Curry Today in basketball, if your team cannot shoot, if your team cannot win three-point battles, you're cooked. If your team cannot space the floor and shoot threes, volume threes, I'm talking about since Steph came in the league, threes are going from like what, barely 20 a game to like 40 for like a lot of these teams now, like the Boston Celtics. If you can't shoot threes at like a 30 to 40% of volume, like attempt volume, you're done. That's just not enough threes. Steph Curry – made the game realize that threes are better than twos and you better get those threes up. It's not exactly about playing like Steph. It's how he changed how he viewed the three-pointer. All right, y'all. All right, all right, all right. That was fire. That Good was stuff, fire. Good stuff. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. That was he. And each round got better and better. Um, appreciate y'all for coming up here and cooking up. Y'all really did y'all thing for the very first battle of PCL. Uh, go ahead and throw this voting up. Y'all got a minute and 30 to vote on the polls. Talk to me. Let me know who won round three. All right. Well, appreciate you guys for coming through. We're going to go ahead and get to the next battle. Uh, Y'all came and held it down for the first one. We'll catch you guys again next week. All right. Thank you. Thank you, W Host. Thank you, Elder. All right. Salute.